thank you. All right, thank you everybody for coming. We're really excited about tonight and what we're about to see. It'll be new for uh, most of us. Um, so thank you so much for taking some time to take a look at, at what Ben's going to show us and then providing some additional feedback. Um, I'm Pierce McGill. I'm Assistant Director of Economic Development for the City of Harrisonburg. I'm Andrew Dono. I'm the Executive Director of Harrisonburg Downtown Council. So just some quick background. Some of you have already participated in our input meetings, but for those of you who haven't, uh, this all started as a partnership with Economic Development, Harrisonburg Downtown Renaissance, and our tourism office, and Brenda Black. Um, and we got together saying, how can we more effectively market um, the suggestion was we really need to coordinate our efforts, and that relates to having a solid brand for the city. Uh, we felt it was more effective use of our limited marketing dollars uh, if we could be out there reinforcing the Harrisonburg brand together. So with that agreement, we then had to come up with a brand. Uh, so we uh, hired Ben Muldrow of Arnett Muldrow & Associates, uh, our branding expert, and he came in in August for a couple days yep. to do a little field work. And then came back Monday, and he has been go, 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 go since Monday. The, the kind of start there and the vignette at delivery on Thursday evening is, is very impressive. Uh, that's the speed government always works, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we started off Monday uh, with some focus group meetings. Then we had a public input meeting Monday night. Uh, continued on with some few dedicated focus group meetings, really dictated by different topics in industry sectors. And yes, and we also put out a survey, continue to have it out. If you have not done it, it still uh, is up on the website. Uh, just kind of get some general feedback. You know, what are your thoughts on Harrisburg? What do you love about Harrisburg? Designing a postcard and his mother said, I see it personally. <laughs> <laughs> I did not feel it was, it was a tough creative. Yeah. But I think it was really a, a cool, comprehensive way that um, your company approaches this. And I like to call Ben the, the brand lifter because I feel like he comes in and Really gets to know the community from the inside and out, and I almost wish that you were here during my first week <laughs> on the job to just take me to different groups and facilitate the conversation. So I wish I could have participated in all of them. I know Tina and Lauren have sat here with you on the shop. So um, they ultimately, like Ben and Thomas, really kind of read to some degree like the love letter to our community that there is a lot of passion and love for this community, and there's a lot of people who want to see that manifested in how we do our communication to our internal and external audiences. So we're putting our full faith in, in the process um, and hope that you all really enjoyed having those conversations. And I think they opened the door to other ones going forward, especially as we think about diversity and some other issues that are really driving some of the work that we're doing. With that, we just wanted to thank you for being here for the, the week and for all of you to participate. And now we're also going to Awesome. Thank you guys. Um, thank you all for coming out. I, I want to first definitely thank Brenda and Pierce and, and Andrea and Kim and Lauren. Um, I hope that you all can appreciate the fact that they are literally sitting in the audience seeing this stuff for the first time right along with you. So that's got to be a little nerve wracking. Um, I get to go home and, and they have to stay here. So um, I, I really appreciate all the support. And honestly, I, I think that the community itself deserves the credit for being able to identify the, the intelligence in partnering together. It is amazing how many times I'm hired by a community and they literally don't know how to play together. And I mean, I had a community in Mississippi where their Convention and Visitors Bureau spent $90,000 developing a brand for the community. And their Main Street organization wanted to be a part and said, we have a budget and we would have, like to be part of this. And the CBB said, no, this is ours. So being able to see that level of working together, it, it, it should be common sense, but it doesn't always work that way. So I, I really, really am excited to share with you um, everything that we heard and saw and the things that we developed this week. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it even harder on myself by turning the lights off. So it'll be my job to keep you engaged, but I think it'll make it a little easier for us to go through this. Um, 
And again, I want to reiterate a little bit about the process. As Andrew and Pierce told you, I came in on Monday. I went through a series of, seems like 10, 12, 14, 100 uh, input meetings. Lauren was in every single one of them. Um, I met well over 100 people throughout the community. We had a public meeting on Monday night. And we had some really, really fantastic conversations. And we're able to dig in on some particular issues. And, and you know, it's one thing to say something on a surface level, but it's a whole other thing to actually mean it and, and be invested in preserving qualities that a community cherishes. So that's really what we want to focus on, on talking about today. So the first thing I always like to do is talk a little bit about this brand. We approach this almost like a toolbox because it's our belief that even though this process was approached with a three-way organizational partnership, for a community brand truly to earn value, it has to exist as a public-private partnership. The resources that we create throughout this process have got to be available to the private sector. They have to be available to our business communities, they have to be available to our event organizers, and they have to be usable so that together the community can truly cultivate that brand equity or brand value. So when people hear Harrisonburg, they automatically think about all the fantastic things that you have to offer. So we typically look at four main elements that create the foundation of that toolbox. The first is a color palette. The second is uniform typefaces. The third is consistent message. And the fourth is graphics and your approach, approach to graphics. Now, I want to show you a couple of examples because we actually, as a firm, always learn a lot from major colleges and universities. Communities need to look at the example that colleges and universities often set, where they have an academic identity and an athletic identity. And oftentimes those identities are separate. There are elements that are shared. Most universities will share a color palette but then there'll be graphics packages that are unique to each one. So as an athletic department is out there managing merchandising contracts and things like that, that's completely different from the graphics and images and messages that are being cultivated to recruit talent and to draw in admissions. So, and I know someone in the audience might or might not be intimately involved in, uh, you know, some of those talks, right, Andy? So, um, <laughs> you being able to see that firsthand and being able to understand that difference. And it's kind of funny when you even look at it, you can see that the university has a seal much like governmental bodies have seals. But then they also have these marketing identities. And when you look at these, typically your athletic department has a little bit more flexibility in the way they change their look and feel because they want to react to market forces where the identity on the institutional side stays a little bit more consistent over time. Now, if we look at the things that the community has been using up until this point, the city has had that formal seal. And tourism has led the development of an identity that can be used to promote it on a market-driven side. So we kind of call this an organizational identity and a destination brand. Now, if we look at the downtown as a subset of the community, for almost 15 years, we've had Harrison Downtown Renaissance. We've had their logo. They've gone through two different major iterations of their identity, but there's never actually been this downtown logo that the community can just use. That's an organizational identity, but there's no destination brand. So those are some of the things that we wanted to look to and wanted to, to see if we could address as we went through the process. The first thing that we did is we listened and then we went out and saw for ourselves. So between the combination of our input sessions and going through the community, touring, taking photos, we're able to kind of see and feel things for ourselves. And I always like to start with a color palette. So I looked at the things that had been used up until this point. Um, HDR has been using blue and gold for a long time as tourism developed identities. They were really, really strategic and kind of overlapping those colors so that we had some consistency. But it is oftentimes difficult when you have kind of a two color palette because you don't necessarily get the dimension and depth and the versatility that you might want. So what we did was 
we looked at the images that we collected throughout the community, and we analyzed those images and see what colors appear most often, and then we look at colors that might either contrast, stick out, or complement the physical surroundings so that the color palette that we pick really makes sense for the community. We identified five main colors, and I'm going to go ahead and give myself a disclaimer that the colors never look like they should on an overhead projector, so don't throw chairs, okay? Um, we, we, we got a little bit of, of time. We got to wait on that. But um, what we did was we selected two different blues, a green, a gold, and kind of an orange. Now, you will notice that there is no purple in the color palette. Um, we're going to allow JMU to continue to own purple. Right? I'm so sick of purple. Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. You know, purple's a really interesting color. Purple has been proven to be one of the most kind of identifiable colors because it's used, uh, it's not used quite as much. But one of the other things that we know is regionally, purple is actually a color that's used as a primary accent in external marketing for stamping right down the road. So knowing that it's a color that's not used very much, but it's a color that is used in your region, we wanted to kind of stay away from that a little bit. But we create that color palette. We're going to use that platform, and I'll talk a little bit about the color selection more as I go through this. But then we started to look at typefaces, and we landed on a pretty interesting challenge. Harrisonburg is a really, really long word. So we started by trying to change the community's name. <laughs> and that didn't really work very well. So um, we had to look at ways that we could communicate your identity consistently, but do it in a way that wasn't too limiting. So I want to share with you a couple things that we went through, because I think it's always good to know the process. A lot of times, the first thing that a community thinks is, we're a beautiful community. Our town is pretty, so we need a script typeface. Well, script typefaces are extremely hard to read, especially the longer the word gets. So we very, very quickly, after looking at several examples, were, it was easy for us to eliminate that. Um, we looked at some more traditional serif typefaces. We looked at, uh, does everybody know what a serif is? I learned in school that it's called a doohickey. That's the technical term for it. When a little thing hangs off your letter, that's a serif or a doohickey. Um, so finally, after we went through all these different options, what we landed on is we landed on a sans serif typeface. Sans serif means it doesn't have doohickeys. It's really clean. It's very crisp. And there's a certain element about sans serif typefaces. They're content neutral. So if you're an old community and you decide that you're going to use the typeface papyrus, is everybody familiar with papyrus? It's on pretty much every commuter, uh, computer now. Um, believe it or not, that doesn't denote that you're old. It just denotes that you're using Microsoft Word. <laughs> so, you know, what we want to do here is we wanted to create something that was easy to read, that conveyed the word Harrisonburg in the right scale, so we selected a typeface. The typeface is called Lulo Clean. Um, it gives us two different weights that are dramatically different in weight. And we really liked that because it allowed us the opportunity to both kind of not yell necessarily, but speak boldly and whisper. And um, both of those things are very important when we're talking to our own community. So with that, what you can see is you can actually start to see this, this dynamic of what a word type might look like in a consistent approach with that nice weight to it. And Harrisonburg does have another thing that you have to be considerate of as you're talking to people outside your market. Harrisburg. You're relatively close to Harrisburg. Uh, you have to slow down and pronounce your syllables. <laughs> or you sound like you're in Pennsylvania. So, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that you all had a very, very easy way and as succinct a way as possible to clearly denote who you are. Now, the next thing that I always like to talk about is what we call brand values. These are the things that we heard you tell us about all week long. And as you can imagine, we sat, sat through about 15 and a half hours of input meetings, and we heard a lot of stuff. 
And I'd like to see if I can summarize that for you into four major points. So what we heard first and foremost is we are a university town. Not a single university, multiple institutions of higher education. We have these a, a high, high value on education at all levels. Um, there's some challenges that come anytime you have institutions like this. And I'm, you might not have heard this before, but sometimes when an institution of higher education purchases property in a city, there are complaints that, oh, all that the university is doing, they're gobbling up everything at their borders, you know. Uh, every time they buy a property, it leaves the tax rolls. Like, we know the argument. Believe it or not, it's universal. It happens everywhere that there's a university. But there's so much good about university communities. You have to think about the things, the byproducts of that. The byproducts of a place that is used to seeing members of their community circulate through and change over. That that causes the people to typically be more inviting and more open arm because they know that their time might be short. Having that influence from global thinkers that will play a role in the staff and the faculty on those institutions. So it really is a very, very rich statement when you think about that concept of a university town. You also typically see cultural assets that outpace your population size. You see a wealth of resources like museums and, and access to enriching programs. The second thing that we heard a lot about was outdoor recreation. Uh, your geographic location in the Shenandoah Valley, your access to world-class trails and cycling and mountain biking and kayaking and fishing. I mean, it was, there was just a tremendous amount of talk there. And there was some really, really great detailed conversation about we got amazing access to outdoor recreation, but are we outdoorsy? Or are we just active? Like, where do we fit on that scale? And I will say the community didn't necessarily land on a definitive answer of what you are, but they landed on an answer of what you're not. They said, we're not crunchy granola. It's like, I kind of get what that means, and that's, that's fine. You know, we're not Asheville, and that's okay, because we're also a university town. It, it was kind of like we're constantly talking about the multitude of assets that we have. But your outdoor recreation resources are truly world-class, and your association with the Shenandoah Valley connects you to a globally known brand. So those are huge opportunities for us. The third thing that we heard was we call it kind of a culinary destination, but it's really multifaceted. It's that, it's that focus in a revitalized downtown. It is this movement coming from a, a vibrant food scene and restaurant scene that that no doubt has momentum, but also has plenty of room to grow and evolve and, and truly blossom almost for a second time. It focuses in on those breweries, and it focuses in on all those just kind of experiences to, to enjoy oneself and also congregate with others. And then finally, the fourth, and probably the, the topic that we talked the most about was the friendly city the warm, welcoming nature, and the proactive things that this community needs to do to preserve that quality. It's not enough to say it. We have to remember to live it. And that can be a hard, time, a hard thing to do sometimes. So that, that focus on awareness, that conscious you know, identification, that that. We want to be welcoming. We want to be a place where we culture, uh, we kind of showcase the members of our community and those cultures, but we got to make sure that we're living up to what we're saying. And that's a really, really strong message to have. So hearing all those things, um, the next thing that we started to do was craft what we call a brand statement. And it's a couple paragraphs long, and I'd love to read it to for you real quick. We are Harrisonburg, Virginia, nestled in the heart of the Shenandoah Valley. 
Harrisonburg has long been home to a rich collection of fertile lands and warm, welcoming people. As a community, we pride ourselves on valuing education. We believe education begins early, and there is always a chance to learn and grow. From our amazing schools to the Explore More Museum, education here is truly a citywide effort. We are a university town and proud to be the home of nationally recognized institutions of higher education. We draw some of the world's most gifted students to learn and enrich themselves and go on to shape the world. We are thrilled to be located in this amazing valley, surrounded by natural beauty and shaped by the experiences it provides. We are never more than a few miles away from hiking, biking, fishing, and skiing. As the hometown to Massanutten and the gateway to Skyline Drive, we truly invite the world to come explore and enjoy our quality of life. Our world-class access combines with our down-home hospitality to create a true escape. In the heart of our historic downtown, a movement is growing. From our preserved buildings come some of the most amazing flavors, unique shops, and award-winning brews. From new investment comes downtown housing, fresh farmers markets, and vibrant events. We are truly becoming a center for activity and creativity throughout the valley. Explore our unassuming nature, our welcoming vibe, a feeling we call our rustic, friendly flavor. For over 80 years, we have been known as the friendly city, and the statement still rings true. From a warm welcome, a genuine interest, a helping hand, or an anonymous gift, the caring nature of a true community is one of our greatest treasures. With over 50 languages spoken in our local schools and refugees and immigrants who we call neighbors and friends, we constantly look to grow with the experiences of others. Inspired by our agricultural roots, our frontier spirit, and our faith-based compassion, our community and its stories are much like a patchwork quilt, stitched with care to form a true tale of friendliness. We are a college town. We are a mountain town. We are a cycling town and a delicious town. We are a cultural town and a diverse town. We are a friendly town. We invite you to be our guest. We are Harrisonburg, Virginia. We are kindness by nature. So what that... <laughs> you can read that like the Pledge of Allegiance from here on. No. Um, yeah, exactly. So... You know, what that document really does, if you notice how that narrative was written, it was broken down into both an introductory and, and kind of a summary, and, and in the middle it was created from those four components. It was written in a way where those components can be somewhat self-contained, they can be used to inspire ad copy, but they can also become kind of the mantra of the movement. And we've had communities before that have taken those brand statements and, and the mayor prints them out and frames them and gives them to business leaders and all of a sudden they start showing up all around town. Um, what this does is this uses a narrative to acknowledge the things the people in the community think are important. Because the fact is you can't necessarily put all that stuff in a logo. You know? <laughs> So being able to show people you were heard and you were right, and that is part of the story. So when you start to tie all that together, it, it starts to walk down this road. And, and the first thing that we wanted to look at, and I want to be really clear because we're going to show you a bunch of different stuff. So don't get too scared when we get into some of the initial designs because there's a lot to it and there's a lot we have to do. So I want to start at the citywide destination level. And that really is Brenda's tourism efforts. That's this message of talking about bringing people from outside the region and cultivating external economies. 
And that's a really, really important thing for a city to do. We wanted something that would perform very well and also look very different from the communities that surround Harrisonburg. And we've worked with a lot of those communities, and we know what a lot of that looks like. And there are a whole lot of, of mountains, and there are a whole lot of mountains, and just like <laughs> mountains, you know? And it's like, all you got to do is put a picture of a mountain, and you're done. And um, we just wanted to make sure that, I think one of the things we landed on very early was this idea that we want Harrisonburg to become iconic. And to do that, we want to introduce images that help you to reach that level. So we designed this kind of monogrammed H that was um, inspired by kind of not only the momentum of, of intertwined cultures, but also that connection to, to the valley and the mountains that surround us and Massanutten Mountain and all those things, and that concept of kindness by nature and it's just really clean and simple but you can kind of see that it uses those crossbars as as that um to kind of build out that h but it just keeps a certain cleanliness and motion to it now if you were like i would be and you were sitting there in the audience and and you saw that you'd be like oh we got a lot more i hope you're ready to show a lot more so the good news is there are a couple more slides um, but I, I'm really excited about the role that this can play because clean contemporary messaging in the tourism world is very, very effective right now. And we went ahead and we mocked up what an ad might look like, again, taking in that clean look, um, taking that tagline and being able to show how it can easily expand, so cycling by nature, uh, you know, heritage by nature, hospitality by nature, history by nature, great dinner by nature. You know, all those things are endless opportunities for, for Brenda to focus in on telling the community's story. Now, that's that part of, of that external messaging, but we also have to think about the city government. And the city government, which tourism is a part of, has their own identity. And they, they deliver services to their constituents. And when we look at the city government, we have to think about the tools that they have. And one of the biggest tools that most communities have is the seal. And you have a very interesting dynamic here in Harrisonburg because you have a crest in a seal. So your logo actually says the city of Harrisonburg and the city of Harrisonburg. <laughs> Twice in the same place. Because if you didn't hear us the first time, we want to make sure you hear us the second time. Um, you know, I completely understand where that comes from. Um, there are always things that you can do to be able to just update and make sure that the graphics that you have from the seal can go through and be used and be shared amongst the city staff. But in addition to that, now that we've seen this color palette and this typeface selection, you can actually take that and you can tie this into the system and you can remove that crest from that circle and tie it with the word type and you can start to create a more contemporary looking identity for your governmental body while still preserving the formality of the elected body and the services that they provide. But then once you do that, you start to set a platform for growth and expansion into additional departments. And this leads into a very, very important conversation when it comes to city government. There are certain departments that need to look clearly like the city government. If I am a codes official and I am walking into someone else's property, I need to look official. But if I am in parks and rec, or if I'm in economic development, or if I am in tourism, I have different markets, different purposes, different audiences, and I need to make sure I can communicate effectively. So I wanted to go ahead and start to prime that pump that there could be consistency while still allowing for variations in the way that you communicate. Does that make sense? Okay, so then from there, we look over to another one of our partners with the community economic development. So community economic development up until this point, I'm going to give you like an A plus for creativity because you used the seal. 
city of Harrisonburg, and then it said economic development under it, which is exactly what most departments end up doing. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to be able to position that economic development department to go out there and communicate effectively in their realm. It is more important that they perform in the job of economic development than it is that they look exactly like every other department in the city. So what we did was we actually took that same icon because we feel like it has a contemporary enough nature to be able to work in economic development, but we put it in a slightly different package. And we introduced this phrase, opportunity is our business. Simple, cut and dry. You're going to hear that kind of stuff all day long, but still it is appropriate. Um, we designed what a business card might look like, because believe it or not, just because you're a city employee, it doesn't have to have the seal on every single business card created. Um, they have some programs like Biz Now, I mean Biz Loan. So showing how through the typeface and through some of those graphics, you can bring those programs in. And then I designed two more things that focus in on economic development initiatives. There's been a clearly defined initiative and focus towards cybersecurity from the city. So I'm calling that Secure Harrisonburg. Again, using those colors, using those typefaces, creating kind of an initiative-based icon for that. And setting that as a foundation, I also want to introduce the idea of a brand new initiative that Pierce has no idea what I'm going to talk about. So I'm essentially going to suggest work for him in front of everyone that he has no clue I'm going to say. But so cybersecurity oftentimes because of the because of the type contracts that you get and the type work that you do. That is typically associated with businesses of a certain size, contracts of a certain size. But we also want to make sure that we have holistic economic development strategies and tactics to target smaller businesses and cultivate that, that spirit of entrepreneurialism right here in Harrisonburg. So what I want to throw out there is the idea of combining that outdoor recreation opportunity with small business development. And I'm calling that Blaze Harrisonburg. And what this is, is this is a targeted focus at first bringing together and truly creating a network of outdoor recreation businesses and then targeting outdoor recreation as a growth sector. Because we are seeing that some of the greatest ways to get younger entrepreneurs to invest in a community is to tap in to outdoor recreation opportunities. And we're also hearing from those big tech companies that the quality of life here in Harrisonburg is part of the reason that they're locating here. So it's, it's kind of a self-perpetuating prophecy. Does that make sense? So just being able to kind of package that up. And, and I chose that... that term blaze, you know, kind of going into the Appalachian Trail and, and the, the trail markers and leading people along the way. Now, from that, I want to jump over into the downtown. So we've looked at the citywide, we've looked at the city government, we've looked at departments in the city. Now we're looking at a distinct district in downtown. The thing that kept coming up about downtown is this is a place where unique offerings are in their highest concentration. This is a place where the friendliness of the city can, can easily be experienced. This is a place where that culinary scene and that creative spirit is manifested. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to create something that, again, was clean and contemporary, but also start to set a foundation that could grow and evolve as the community did. So we wanted to create a stylized H, again, creating a connection between city level and downtown level, but one that was created from icons that represented the things that were going on downtown. So what we came up with was something that looks a little like this. And you can see there are a lot of different things. In fact, when we're done, we'll leave it up and you can um, look and see all the things that we left out. 
but I'm thinking that we hit a bunch of stuff, you know. We tried to think about the different activities. We've got everything from a quilt square to a farmer's market basket to bowling pins to bikes to the spring house to the courthouse, you know. So we're hitting on so many of those elements. Um, this is a very busy kind of look and feel, but we did that intentionally. We feel like people need to be motivated to dig in and to explore for themselves. And there's one thing to say, discover, discover downtown Harrisonburg. But that's kind of what everybody says. But when you create identities that are intriguing, that draw people in, then you start to use your graphics to actually promote people digging deeper. Um, as we go through, we always like to make sure that that system kind of works. It's simplified down in one color. It's simplified down in, in reverse out and, and still works pretty well. But to me, what's so exciting about this is because of how it's composed, you can actually go through and you can create new variations of all one particular focus. So if you notice, everything in this H is all outdoor recreation. You can do another one completely made up of culinary. And you can constantly grow and change. And we were even talking about the idea of, can you imagine moving into the holiday season and having businesses create layouts where they use products to make that H? And you start to create this promotion of exploring the business community through doing that. Does that make sense? Now, another thing that we really want to, to take and run with is this concept of rustic friendly flavor. And I know that's kind of a funny phrase, but I want to talk through that for a second because we spent a lot of time discussing messaging. One of the words that we heard over and over again was unassuming. This community is unassuming. We had people say, you know, if we actually were willing to tell our own story 10 years ago, we might be in a different place now. But we're, we're not really one to brag. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I, you know, I hear you. I understand. But being able to craft something that you can own, um, what that, that rustic really kind of ties into this gives you a little bit of room. It, it's okay for there to be, you know, a little rough to it little grit to it. I heard the term grit used. I like that. I think a lot of people like that. There's a reason why industrial furniture and warehouse districts are so hot, you know. People are used to going and eating inside a shipping container, so you're not really that gritty for that. So you've got a little bit of, of, of that kind of unassuming, welcoming, not overly polished, so polished that you can't be comfortable somewhere. Friendly. We like that sentiment, and we think that's a value that the community wants to preserve. And then finally, that concept of flavor is an opportunity for us to both comment on one of the things that we're excelling at with our culinary district, but also to focus in on that heightened awareness at cultural diversity and truly celebrating those differences. Now, from that, we then turned to look at Harrisonburg Downtown Renaissance. And this was, this was an interesting one for us to tap into because you have a 15-year-old organization that has earned a tremendous amount of, uh, I guess, positive track record. I mean, there's a, there's a kind of a street cred there, and, and people don't necessarily know what in the world HDR does. As we dug in, they know that it exists, and they're not really sure exactly what it does, but they know whatever it is they do, they seem to do it well. So that's kind of an interesting dynamic. Um, and that's, you know, that's not actually, that's not all that atypical. Um, the other thing that we noticed is there are a couple interesting observations. No one says Harrisonburg downtown. Everybody says downtown Harrisonburg. That's kind of the natural way that it flows for some reason. And the, the most important thing to me, because I have dyslexia and I can't spell anything right, a renaissance is a tough word. Um, 
But you have to think back to 15 years ago when this organization was created and downtown was at a certain point. So over that 15 years, this organization has dedicated its time and efforts to changing downtown. And there was some very, very interesting conversation about how, what if the renaissance is done? That doesn't mean our work is done. It just means that it's kind of like we finished one part. I mean, even the renaissance itself was just a phase. Like there were things that happened after the renaissance. So... We dug into that a lot, and we were asked to kind of weigh in on what our recommendation would be. And after talking to a lot of different groups and asking a lot of questions, there, there were a couple realizations. First of all, the overall awareness that there is an organization that is making downtown better is very high. Uh, the name of that organization is not quite as high below the acronym. People know the acronym, but don't necessarily know what it means. Um, they certainly don't know much about them being a Virginia Main Street community, and they know virtually nothing about the Main Street model, the four-point approach, or the nationwide network that that organization's connected to. So all those things together, um, what I want to throw out tonight, and again, this is this is my suggestion. It's always fun to like suggest this in front of a staff and board that have no clue what I'm getting ready to say. But we do recommend a name change for the organization. We think it, it makes sense for the time. And we think that with the branding process that's happening right now, there literally is no better time. And what we're recommending is changing it to Downtown Harrisonburg Incorporated. Um, it's not particularly sexy on purpose. Like, we're not trying to find cute. We're actually trying to land on a name that we don't have to have this conversation in another 15 years. So we want to add that professionalism. Um, we designed a new logo for this organization. and But again, this is simply a concept. This is as we introduce a downtown brand, we wanted to reposition this with a little more professionalism. But I think there's still going to be a lot of conversation around this change. But what we created was an icon that was actually derived off of your street grid. And you have a very interesting dynamic of how your square is offset on one street but equal on the other. Most squares that you see, it's kind of, it's either straight on or the streets are on the sides. So you have this kind of unique dynamic. The icon is made up of five colors. Those five colors kind of represent the four elements of the four-point approach. And then also this, this organization is strongly connected to the Friendly City Merchants, which is a, a, you know, a group that is supporting the merchant community in the downtown. So, again, that just kind of shows a move towards a different look and feel and a different approach to how the organization exists. Now we've got a couple other things I want to share with you. We just kind of call it brand extension. As you can imagine, we wrapped up last night about eight. So everything that you're seeing was created in the last 22 hours. And um, so this is kind of our hodgepodge of throwing some stuff out there, but I want to share it with you. Uh, the first thing is we thought it might be interesting to go through and look at creating a flavor guide. So from a tourism perspective, there's an identified uh, niche that's growing in kind of that food scene. So being able to create a, a flavor guide that's maybe a little bit more than just a standard trifold brochure. Um, when I came here 12 years ago, one of the first things that I remember seeing, I think that was right after the wayfinding signage had gone up and the signage that you have was designed by Fraser and Associates right down in Stanton. Um, really, really great signage for 12 years ago. Um, but it's also 12-year-old signage. And believe it or not, the signage does kind of have a lifespan. Most people say it's 7 to 10 years. So you can already say, we've got our money's worth, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what we wanted to do was we were just showing how as you're going through and you're thinking about updates on particular signage, one of the big messages that we heard loud and clear is, and I'm going to say it the way that one person said it to me, I'm going to ask a question. How important is it how good our downtown looks 
if all of our entry corridors look horrible. So between signage, between banner systems, between public uh, beautification and maybe rethinking some of the ways that those entry corridors look and, and are landscaped, um, believe it or not, travelers are somewhat forgiving. Locals are a lot less forgiving. So I've never necessarily found the entry corridors to, to be all that bad, but there are certain elements where you feel like maybe you've gotten turned around a little. So enhancing signage on those entry corridors. One of the other things that, that I think is very, very obvious in this community is there is some true consistency in materials use, the use of stone and the way in which it's used. So think about the materials that exist throughout the community and think about the most appropriate materials at the place in which you're putting the sign. You don't have to pick one and every single one looks exactly the same. Pick the things that are the most appropriate for, for that spot. We also are just showing some examples of some different sign, uh, banners that could go up and these are kind of focused a little more into the downtown district. But we're going to do some designs that are more tourism oriented for the community as a whole, especially even the concept of introducing some additional banners on the east side of 81. We always like to create some collateral materials, just things that people might want to buy. And then also um, one of the big things that I always like, especially with the downtown shopping district, is you're creating things like shopping bags and just resources to help the businesses to, to really create and share that identity. So with that, I told, uh, told Pierce I thought I was going to go about 50 minutes and it's, it's 6.52. Um, that's what we were able to create in the last day. Um, we wish we could have done a little more, but people kept coming in and asking us questions. No, I'm kidding. Um, I, I would love to open that up and open up the floor now to you all. Um, I know that you've seen and heard a lot. There are a lot of different strategies in play. You have a lot of different organizations and a lot of different pieces that kind of tie in together, and there's still there's still a lot of flushing out that needs to happen. But with a system like this, we always like to share that with the community early on and, and see if you all feel like we're walking down the right road. So if I would, I'd love to open it up uh, briefly for comments and, and anything you want to make sure that I hear and take away. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, thank you. Um, and thanks, Piers and Brenda, Andrea, and everyone who is a part of hosting while you're here and uh, Virginia Tour, uh, uh, this is great. I think this is phenomenal. I love uh, the majority of what I saw. Mm -hmm. Quite honestly, I think the only thing I didn't like was the blaze. Oh, yeah. Paint stroke. That's uh, kind of weird. All right. But um, literally, other than that, I loved everything I saw. I like the flavor and how it made me feel. Um, question for you, though. Yes, sir. From a marketing perspective, when you went to the collateral, mm -hmm. I saw the t-shirt. Mm -hmm. As much as I love the H mm -hmm. and the things that it was uh, that you created out of the H, what I immediately thought once I saw it on the back of a t-shirt mm -hmm. was about this, I thought about this person that ran for president. And um, she used an H. Yes. And so, but now when I looked at this bag, I thought, hmm, having that H by itself mm -hmm. made me think of her brand. Right. With everything else, I loved it and instantly thought of Harrison Road. Right. But when I saw it independently, that didn't make me, that Ab instantly drew me. Absolutely. To 2016. And, and let me, what you just described is you described the perfect example of the act of introducing an icon. Because if you remember back to earlier, in the campaign when said candidate introduced said icon, the first thing that happened was connections and references to what that looked like. That looked like this logo and that looked like this logo. There's a certain simplicity right. that comes from icons. And the simplicity is a huge asset to you, but it also takes with it a, a responsibility on the organization that is rolling it out. You have to earn the meaning. So that being said, 
Um, I like to show a lot of different elements, but just because I'm showing a lot of different elements in this presentation doesn't mean that those elements should all be rolled out at launch. You got to earn the credit. You got to earn the recognition. You got to use it in play before you can start to simplify it down. You see what I'm saying? So it's like you earn that, that connection. And part of that is actually really, really good because it forces you to actually actively communicate. Branding is not about creating a logo. It is about creating a dialogue. And a dialogue requires more than one, one you know, voice and more than one message. So you're exactly right. Um, you, can, you can imagine that there are actually quite a few simple H logos that we reviewed to make sure that from a graphic standpoint, we have enough variation. Um, and we might or might not have mentioned that when we looked at it, but we wanted to make sure from a color standpoint, from an overall composition, that as long as you look at them together and they're nowhere close, you're good and know that you have to earn that, that, um, that kind of background before you can simplify that. Great point. Yes, sir. Yep. So I'm trying to, in my head, I'm trying to put together rustic flavor in downtown Harrisburg Incorporated. I feel like it's just kind of failing us here. But I'm also wondering more about could you explain the downtown Harrisburg Incorporated history to some degree that I'm thinking some kind of Wall Street firm, hedge firm, uh, mm -hmm. so I want to know more about how the incorporation works and how that works. So when you look at downtown organizations, there are essentially three different options for their names. <laughs> if we're really, like if we're digging into the bluntness of it. Um, most of the communities that are in the Main Street network simply name themselves Harrisonburg Main Street. But because of a lack, let's see if I can say this the right way, because of a lack of brand awareness on the national level and even on state coordinating program levels about what Main Street means and what the Main Street network and the Main Street approach mean, there are some liabilities to tying your name directly into that. So as we consider the name change, the first option we consider is Harrisonburg Main Street. Well, here's the issue in Harrisonburg. Harrisonburg has a main street, but the main street is not the only street in the district. So the first thing that we knew we would open ourselves up to is the scrutiny that the focus was too much on one primary street and was not happening on any of the other streets that make up downtown. So from an awareness standpoint, we knew that we wanted to do something there. Um, the organization is an interesting one because it is a grassroots organization, but it's also an economic development entity. So as you go through, and I think one of the things that we were trying to do was introduce and preserve a certain perceived professionalism. But if the organization finds that it is too, say, cold or stale or professional or Wall Street, I think that we've at least started the conversation. You know. We know why we didn't recommend Harrisonburg Main Street, and we know that, or I feel like downtown Harrisonburg Incorporated allows us the opportunity to do something that, that with our messaging, with our look and feel, with us talking about who we are and what we do, we can keep that warmth, we can keep that connection. But, if I can add that, the yeah. other thing too, David, you might have walked in after the downtown identity itself. Identity for downtown, the identity for, identity for Harrisonburg downtown Renaissance are two completely different things. People don't come downtown because of Harrisonburg downtown Renaissance. Right. They come downtown because of rustic friendly flavor or whatever. Right. So you never, you never really associate um, a, a slogan like rustic friendly flavor with Harrisonburg downtown Renaissance. Right. That's with Harrisonburg downtown. Our audience, Harrisonburg downtown Renaissance audience, is developers, um, is you know city leaders. Folks that we need to get involved in helping to create the conditions for downtown to thrive. So the, the 
the choices, I, I think, is less inappropriate than you might think. Um, I, I'm, my, I'm, a, I'm actually coming at it from we're a nonprofit because incorporated sound like we don't need donors. Um, mm -hmm. So there's, there's that issue as well. Right. But the target audience thing, I think, solves your point. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just have a question about the age that had like the three lines and three yeah. colors running through it. So um, when you were you were talking about mountains and stuff like that, and um, and then when I first saw it, I was kind of like, Ooh. and then um, yeah, how are you? I loved everything. No, no, no. How are you? <laughs> okay, that's, that's what I thought. <laughs> and I, I loved everything else, and I realized that when I, as you continued showing stuff, and that age was in different, you know. Formats and things like that, um, uh, for examples, I started to like it, and mm -hmm. which I couldn't figure out why. But so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I guess I'm wondering, can you explain to me again the whole? Were the I feel like I'm not getting something. I guess the three lines were they all three like different mountains or no? And and okay, so let me let me see if I can hit on a couple of your things. First of all, when you first see it and you go, oh, that's um, actually an extremely normal response. Okay. <laughs> and part of it, part of it is going to be your response to the design you see. But part of it is going to, to be the graphic representation of your community in a way you've never seen before is always off-putting. Because if there's anything you should be familiar with, it's your home. So... So that gut instinct makes a lot of sense. And the fact that you're saying my gut reaction was negative, but as I saw it used more and more, it definitely warmed up on me. That, that makes a lot of sense because that's kind of typical. Now, honestly, when you look at those three lines and those three elements, it, it's not as complicated as you think it is. It, it's, it is abstract. Oh, okay. Um, we, we played around with the idea of attempting to be more literal. We went in and we looked at what would it look like if it was like a, a really kind of true uh, profile of, say, Massin Up Mountain because we think that from here looking out there, like that's a very recognizable profile. But it also removed, it removed the flow. You know, it made it too literal instead of just making it a little bit more abstract. There are a couple concepts there, you know. One of them is just the idea of kind of mountains, series of mountains with kind of space in between. And another is the idea of multiple elements that are intertwined, much like the people and culture that we hear here. Now, I have to tell you, from a design standpoint, that's like really, oh, that sounds really good. You know, I mean, it, it's, that's part of what the abstract is. Like that, that was the inspiration because what we were trying to accomplish from a city tourism standpoint was we wanted to take all of the positive experiences of the warmth and the cultural diversity that we're hoping to continue to develop and promote and stitch it together with this huge opportunity for outdoor recreation and, and positioning Harrisonburg as a base camp to experience the region. So those were the concepts we were trying to stitch together. And there's... We played around with it. Sean and I each tweaked on it. Doesn't mean it's perfect. Doesn't mean there's not plenty of room for improvement. So well, I love it. I just wanted someone to tell yeah. me why. Does that I help? Did yeah. Five minutes ago. Right. Yes, it's, it's very helpful. All right. Go. Yes, sir. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, I, 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 also, I also like it. It's great. great. Congratulations. Uh, the, that lime green sort of color mm -hmm. that you used, and you had it as a sample on the business card on the banner. Uh, I can see that perhaps the saturation on, yeah. the, on, the, on the projector is not right, but the white printing on top of that green very, seems to be very difficult to read. It's bad on the projector. It's, 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 much, it's a darker tone than it shows up. Greens are always blow out. And, and then the other comment I have, and, and, and I guess you serve local, local people, and, and the Brooklyn, New York way, mm -hmm. uh, I know my accent probably is <laughs> but uh, rustic is not a term I would Describe Harrison Bird at all. Really? Yeah. I think of rustic as some log cabin on the way it sounds is, and then rustic does not resonate with me. That was going to be my, my opinion. Yeah, huh? That was going to be my comment too. Yeah. That to me, that um, in the attempt to sort of bring us out of like this downtown Renaissance phase and bring us into a more modern thing, and I think the, the, the use of the seal and all that stuff, but then throwing in the word rustic almost takes us back to that like backwood step cousin of Charlottesville. Like it's mm -hmm. trying to get away from. Yeah, you know, so we want people to take us seriously as a as a dining destination, as a tourism destination, and all of a sudden now we're kind of so we're still people back in the holler mm -hmm. that don't know anything. To me, that's how that that resonates. 
Okay, and let me let me push back on it. And, I, and here's what I'm not going to do. I cannot I cannot argue for the merit of the word rust. But what I can argue for is you brought up Charlotte. And is it me and or no? I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> so there, part of what we do when we do this process is we have to listen. We have to listen to the characteristics that the citizens repeat over and over again about things that they don't want to change. And one of the elements that we want to try to preserve with this system is that unassuming, approachable, warm, welcoming, yet still quality. So, I mean, people didn't ever say it, but they kind of said, we, we want to continue to improve while not being Charlotte's fault. So, so when you all say that and bring the word up about rustic, I, I can't sit up here and say, I disagree with you. It's the right word. Um, hopefully, as you take these recommendations and you take, take the concepts home with you, I urge you to think about that. Think about that phrase and see if you come up with some sort of, of word or message that, that does what we do want to do. We do want to capture that approachable that we do want to capture that um, that easy to experience, just easy to be here kind of community. And, and I think that's a huge asset that people love. And, and hopefully as we go through this process and we refine that messaging, we can land on a phrase that, that both does that but moves us away. Because I think your points are very, very well made. Absolutely. What about the, the, uh, the slogan system that you have for the city, is friendly by nature. That's, that's fabulous. Um, and I think that does what you're saying with Rustic ought to do. Um, friendly by nature, delicious by nature, you can, you can mass customize it. Um, and it's a nice double entendre. But it's who we are naturally, but we're also near the, near the natural. Right. right. So that, that line might do it all for everybody. I think okay. you missed the new one also. Mm -hmm. I missed the red. Right. That was that was the one cue that was from the beginning. Yeah. That I didn't see continue throughout. Gotcha. Um, yep. But I love it. But anyway. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Um, you know, yes. from all these unique backgrounds to come in and feel like they are very much part of that community. Right. Maybe you can just take that with the community. And, and here's, I'm going to, I'm going to both confirm exactly what you're saying and also push back a little. Um, I, can you think of images that are relevant to downtown today that do a good job of sharing that diversity. And if you can't think of them, then it might actually expose the problem of conditions today, 2017, in the cultural diversity that everyone promoted actually existing and being able to be experienced in downtown. So it goes back to my very first, like when I first showed it, Part of the reason we created it the way that we did was because we intend it to grow and evolve. It has to be able to change. The images have to be able to change. There might be businesses represented or activities represented 
in that icon that go away in the moment that they do, you got to You know what I'm saying? So, so I don't disagree with what you're saying, and I think that it kind of raises that flag of let's make sure, is it enough to say we got 50 voices, 50 languages in the school, or are we proactively cultivating the sharing of those cultures outside of the international festival? I think it's a great point. But that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Absolutely. You did a great job with Pornhub with the Islamic images, but I wasn't. And, and hopefully you can see that because of the composition, interchanging icons is very simple. Yeah. And we wanted to create a platform that made it simple. And part of the point I don't think that that's a. What we saw today is what's true, right? And, and as we go downtown, what we just look at the room right now, like that's a representation of. What people do that hang out downtown, and you know, Jim walks downtown every day. No, and, I, I, and, I, and I gave the example of uh, in a meeting earlier <laughs> that you only see certain um, people, almost individuals of not you know, almost that. individuals. It, Chris named every African American <laughs> in downtown in one of our meetings. So, so like I think all those points fit in. Yeah, yeah. but I agree with you, and I think it's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, and I, and I agree with you, and I, and I think that's why we're seeing the difference that we're seeing. And I'm not saying it's bad. I think it is what we are right now. But, yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking about ways that we can open up the lenses, like not being a true downtown, but trying to Absolutely. totally welcome our larger community. So, yeah, it's not just we one group of people that you see all the time. Because we wouldn't be just to ourselves if we said, hey, we love all these people of other things. But it would be like false advertising if you yeah. thought that you were going to get all that when you came down there. Right. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and very, very deliberately, if you notice, when when we designed that um, that primary H, it did not include any person. It didn't include a silhouette of any person. It was always objects. And um, there were a couple activities that we talked about and a couple of experiences and things in and I mean, honestly and sadly, like the best I could come up with at the time was a globe. That that's, but I think you've honed in on part of the reason why branding is important. It, if this exposes a discrepancy between what we think and what reality is, and we truly cherish what we think, we need to step up to the plate and bridge that with reality. Yeah. So a couple of days ago when we met. Yeah. When I look at these, mm -hmm. I don't see any aspiration. Right. I totally understand that in general this kind of branding is about economic development. And so I can look at this and very like much like the print that came out a couple of years ago and shows every kind of lifestyle activity that white people enjoy right next to each other with icons. Right. And you can argue that that's what Harrisonburg downtown is about now. The job is to go beyond that right. and create something that's Exactly. So the question of false advertising is not a question. It's not a question of what exists now and whether this is a perfect reflection of what exists now. I disagree. It needs to go somewhere beyond. It's not that you're going to go into the future and is it there, but you right. gesture towards what one would want to do as a community. Yes. And, and we can, to, if as we walk down that road, we can agree to disagree at a certain point. But I will tell you, because I answered the question. It absolutely should be aspirational. The way that we achieved an aspirational nature in this system to me, and the way that I designed it, was its growth and expandability. I feel like, based off what I heard from the people in the community, that saying that you are diverse when you're not actually diverse 
is already a hot topic. It's already a button here. So the best thing that I could do was create this dialogue, acknowledge what I saw, and then create what is truthful with the ability for it to adapt as the community changes. And the fact that in this presentation, a member of the community acknowledged, hey, I like it, it looks good, but it's pointed out a major problem. To me, that is the aspiration we're talking about because it is not going to be a logo that's going to change any of these issues. It's going to be the motivation and passion of the residents that'll change it. So hopefully that helps that like, the best thing I could do was give a system that was super easy to change so that with every success, you actually celebrate that success with evolution. Does that make sense? Awesome. Right. And there's something very different between that and graphic system. Um, so, yeah. I, gotcha. But I understand what you're saying. Okay. All right. I've kept you for over an hour, so I always like to, to try to keep these pretty tight, especially when it's right at dinner time. Um, so, I'm going to be around for a little while. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions one on one. Um, I would like to thank everybody here. I. Pretty much everyone here I've seen in at least two meetings by this point. Um, hopefully, based off of what you saw tonight, I hope that you see that we took the, the job of listening and responding to you all very seriously. Uh, Sean and I had an amazing week. We are, I really, really love this community. The people that are here, um, every place always talks about it's the people, but yours, I think, are cooler than most others. Um, but really, you, the whole idea of the friendly city, you feel it. You feel it. It takes, it, it takes a while in other places to truly feel at ease. And here in Harrisonburg, it takes so little time before you can truly feel comfortable. You know, as I walked around this community and saw people, I mean, you were giving me a hard time last night, you know, it's like we just met. So, like, it, it, it really has been great. Um, I, I want to, I know, nobody's surprised that you would give me a hard time. Um, so, just want to give you all an update. I'm going to, I've recorded the presentation tonight. I'm going to post it on YouTube. So, you all will have the opportunity to review it, share it with others. We're going to have some time to be able to dig in and uh, think about refinements. And then I actually was talking with Kim. I think I'm going to come back in a couple weeks and have an opportunity to sit down with the, the partners and everything. And we might even see if we can put together a steering committee. But um, this process is not going to be a long, drawn-out process. We're going to keep this thing moving forward. We want to be able to have the time to listen and, and refine based off your comments. And then from there... We want to get this thing adopted and get the resources out so people can tag into it. Pierce. So, yeah.